Go with me just to Genesis 22. Genesis 22. And this is where he's offering his son up. But I want you to see there's two times in the scripture where I see God really excited. This is one of them. And the other is 2 Chronicle chapter 1 when, um, when Solomon asks, doesn't ask for wealth or anything else. He asks to be the king that God made him to be, right? But here, let's, let's look at this. Let's, look, let's start in verse, uh, verse 16. God saying, By myself I have sworn, saying to the Lord, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son. Notice, you're all in with me. My covenant with you, you're all in. You offered your greatest possession, your son, back to me. He said, blessing, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you as, the, as your descendants, as the stars of heaven, the spiritual seed, and as the sand, which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates of your enemy. And in your seed, capital, you know, it's, it's the seed, Jesus, all nations on the earth will be blessed. Uh, because you what? You have obeyed me. So you, do you see that, that covenant, that pure language? Now, I'm just going to take a short time, and I want to show you. Go to, with me to 1 Samuel chapter 18. I want to show you a real example of covenant. And just to give you some background, we're going to look just at four short scriptures, and we'll do it very quickly. Saul is the king of Israel. Saul has been disobedient. Saul has been prideful. Saul is not the right guy. God promised David, anointed David, to be king, right? So Saul's son, Jonathan, uh, is the heir to the throne. Okay, so he is, the king dies, Jonathan becomes king, okay? So David and Jonathan form a covenant. They do it here. They start it here in, Genesis, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 18. It says, And when they had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house anymore. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off his robe and he gave, put it on him and gave it to David with his armor, even his sword, his bow, and his belt. Do you, do you guys see what they did? The prince, the heir of the throne, gives him his robe. Now he's a prince. What did David give him? A shepherd's robe. Nothing, right? And we see that, that he gives him his bow, his armor, which means I'm going to defend you now, right? So if we go over to chapter 19 and verse 1, it saw, and Saul spoke to Jonathan, his son, and to all the servants that they should kill David. But Jonathan, Saul's son, delighted greatly in David. So Jonathan told David, saying, My father Saul seeks to kill you. Therefore, please be on your guard until morning and stay in a secret place and hide. And I will go out and stand beside my father in the field where, he, where, where you are. And I will speak with my father about you. Then I will observe and I will what? Tell you. So now this covenant even goes above his father and the king. There's nothing in Jonathan's life that, that would benefit by saving David. I mean, he's going to become king. He's going to take over the throne. David's in the way, but he made a covenant with him. He loved him. He loved him as his own. Go over to chapter 20, and the language gets a little convoluted here, but let's go verse 8. It says, uh, it says Therefore you shall deal kindly with your servant, for you have brought your servant into a covenant of the Lord. Notice the covenant that they made is a covenant of the Lord with you. Nevertheless, if there is iniquity in me, kill me. There, you're, kill me yourself. For why should you bring me to your father? But Jonathan said, far be it from you. For if I knew certainly that evil was determined by my father 
to come upon you, then would I not tell you? David said to Jonathan, who will tell me? Or what if your father answers you roughly or wrong, basically? Jonathan said to David, come, let us go into the field. So the, both of them went into the field. Jonathan said to David, the Lord God of Israel is a witness. I have, so, I have sounded out my father sometime tomorrow or the third day, and indeed there is good toward David, and I do not send to you and tell you. May the Lord do so as much more to Jonathan. But if it pleases my father to do you evil, then I will report it to you and send you away that you may go out safely. And the Lord be with you and he, as he has been with your father. And you shall not only show me kindness, Jonathan speaking, of the Lord while I still live and I may not die, but you shall not cut off your kindness from my house forever. No, not when the Lord has cut off the enemies of David from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, Let the Lord require it at the hand of David and his enemies. Now Jonathan again caused David to vow because he loved him as his own. So he made a covenant again. He, they reconfirmed it. And Jonathan's thinking, that he's an enemy of God. He knows he's an enemy of God. He knows that, that Saul is getting you know, greater sickness in his mind to want to kill David, who's done really nothing wrong, right? And so he's telling him, I think I'm going to die. I th I'm going to stick with my dad. I think I'm going to die. And if I do, then I don't want you to cut off the love from my house. I want you to to love my errors, and to have this covenant extend into the next generation, right? 